update. I've been doing uh, quite a bit of work, actually. Um, uh, my, Mike and I have been looking at um, the relationship between what are called session types and um, Kairos style types. So, so Luis Kairos um, published a seminal paper, um, Spatial Behavioral uh, Logics and uh, a Spatial Behavioral Observations in a Logic for the Pi Calculus. And that sort of opened up um, uh, about about the same time I was I was contemplating um, an algorithmic approach to um, uh, you know to uh, generating type systems. So the the two ideas collided, and that's when I published namespace uh, logic, um, which extends the the program considerably, um, and then. Uh, and then, you know, started working out the, the details of ladle. Now, the interesting thing is that the community was doing um, something else as well called session types. And session types, you can really see them as um, uh, kind of, uh, um, well, I mean, an, an ungenerous thing is just like, that the type system is linear logic and you make the computational system fit that, right? And in some ways you can, when you look at Wadler's paper, paper, it's kind of has that shape. So the, the type system is effectively linear logic and then he sort of makes a version of pi calculus that, that will support that type of system. And, you know, there's, there's some truth to that because it's unrecognizable from pi or pi is just barely recognizable. So that's um, that's that's what's going on uh, there. But but really, what it's what it is is about balance communication. So you know, more, more generously, um, session types originally started with you know just trying to make sure that the communication on on a on a channel was balanced, and then you can you can consider across multiple channels how to make it balanced, uh, and and that's what linear logic is doing for you. Is, is balancing all the ins and outs. Does that make sense so far? Yes, I'm following. So um, it turns out that um, Abramsky gives a construction in computational interpretations of linear logic that is very powerful. Uh, um, Essentially, what he does is he he takes the Girard Quantal, uh, which is an algebraic structure that Girard uses to to interpret linear logic, and um, he he relates it to um, the re reduction relation of a computational mechanism. Um, and this is important because at the end of the day, what What's really going on from, from the ladle perspective? You know, one of the one of the essential things that's going on is uh, with with session types as opposed to uh, the Kairos style types is that um, the negation of the session types is related to execution, whereas the negation of the Kairos types is related to the collection. So if, if in ladle, what, what's happening is you've got two things. You've got a computational mechanism and you've got a collection mechanism. And formulae are just interpreted as the collection of all the computations that bear witness to the formula. That's the interpretation of the formula. Um, and so um, the uh you have these and, and the, the the ladle thing is you take um computations formed over collections so computational terms formed uh, with collections and turn them into uh collections of computations so that distribution of collection of term you're starting with term over collection and you flip it around to collection over term so that's a distribution and that's why it's called logic as a distributive law 
that's where the legal acronym comes from. So um, uh, we uh, um, we can generate pyrase style types, um, and that's relatively straightforward. But then the negation of that logic is is not related to execution, and that's not satisfying. So you'd like to find you'd like to find um, a notion of negation that's related to execution. And Abramski's construction gives that. And the question is, how general is that construction? So a couple of years back, I gave a talk on Casper about a notion of derivative that I had discovered, um, where you start with um, certain kinds of polynomial functors for which, uh, and, 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 then, and then you go and you, you plug in um, into, you, you basically recursively close up the, poly, the, um, the variables in the polynomial with a, with a recursion on the whole data type. And, um, and that does indeed define uh, a derivative-like gadget. Um, and then I, and I hypothesized or, or conjectured that it might be of interest to look at rewrites that are limited to the, um, that are limited to the, uh, just using the derivative to raise or lower computation, basically to reify or reflect computation. So I, I observed that the row calculus is Turing complete. And so, and if you look at the COM rule, you know, essentially what you're doing is you're, you're turning a computation into uh, data and, and passing it across the channel. And then if, if in the process of doing a substitution, you hit a DREF, then you're turning that, that uh, data back into computation. So that so you can think of the rewrite rule as as balancing those two capabilities. And so you could think of you could think of restricting your attention rather rather than so so the, the issue is we, we want a negation that's related to executions. So negation has to be related to the rewrite rules in some way. Right. And if you look at Abramsky's construction, the rewrite rules are very, very carefully balanced. Um, they're only um, they're only uh, 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 you know they they're 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 matched so that so that you do get you it's already built in that you get this this balancing of ins and outs um, and the question is could you do that more generally now. The argument is that you can use reflection to achieve that. And, and if you restrict your rewrite rules to sufficient but not necessary, um, then you could insist that all systems be encoded into this reflective format. And you know that that's possible because the format's Turing complete. And then, um, and then you would uh, th then you would be able to reason about just this limited class of rewrite rules. So that's the idea. Um, you restrict to a limited but but universally expressive class of rewrite rules, and then see if you can carry out this uh, a version of the Abramsky construction that's made available because you have reflection and and reification. So that's the trick, and so. Um, I, there's a lot of moving parts, <laughs> a, a whole bunch of moving parts, um, here. And I'm, you know, I, I don't want to build a Rube Goldberg machine, but I'm just, but I'm, I'm trying to just piece all the pieces together that have, um, that have, that are necessary, right? That, that play a necessary role 
in the construction so that you can relate um, session types to the Kyrie style types so that so that the the ladle construction does give you um, does give you unification because right right now we're able to show for example that you do get a unification of um, all the um, uh, uh, of the, the the functional types so the arrow type uh, from functional languages is um, unified with the the modal types uh, from the spatial behavior or, or Hennessy Milner logics. So that's a surprising result, right? No, nobody ever thought to relate those two, um, and, but they are related. And we show exactly how they're related. We give a calculation. And so the question is, you know, can you, can you extend this program to capture not just the functional types, but the session types so that you got, you know, one type system to rule them all, <laughs> so to speak. Um, and uh, and so um, the so, so where we are in the in the calculation is um, I've been able to um, essentially reconstruct a uh, in, at the type system a version of reflective data passing um, that. Uh, you know, is, is automatically. So, so you hand me uh, a term language that is one of these polynomial functors. So that's basically any any programming language will sort of usually fit inside one of these, you know, polynomial functors. So you, your your polynomial functor is capturing the syntax of your notion of computation, and then and then I can I can take that polynomial functor. And I can extend it um, with a, a lambda-like gadget um, that's that's only name passing. So we 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 use we use a variant of the derivative construction that I found two years ago, and we can naturally extend it to create contexts with named holes where the where the naming of where the the holes are, are built out of these out of these uh, um, you know reified computations so the, so that the names are are names like in the row calculus but this is all at the type theoretic level it's not at the it's not at the um, it's not at the uh, you know the term level right so I'm your your hand so the, the 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 party that wants to run or the agent that wants to run the ladle algorithm is ha handing me the theory of their programming language minus the rewrite rules. And I hand them back a version of their programming language that has this um, reflective data passing um, built in. So it has everything that they had together with uh, reflective data passing ex as an extension. And then that allows them to. Um, that allows them to, uh, to, to change their rewrite rules from whatever they might have been, like you know, the, the rewrite rules for the Java virtual machine or, or some calculus or whatever, into these reflect, compile them into these reflective rewrite rules. And then the next step in the calculation, so, so that, that's already kind of cool, right? It's already a pretty, it's a pretty tricky thing to do. Um, um, but then the next step is uh, is even is even trickier. It turns out that there's a relationship between call CC, um, which is a, a, a continuation based um, uh, mode of, of computation, and the law of excluded middle. And that's what I use in R space is you know the 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 reason we store continuations and we have this data integrity thing that at a at a name in, in the tuple space there's only ever, ever data or a continuation is because of this relationship between call cc and the law of excluded middle uh, so either you have a or not a and that that arises from the fact that if you uh, <clears throat> you can before you go 
looking, you grab the current continuation. And um, if you discover that things have gone awry, then you, then you call the continuation and that establishes your not A. Um, uh, so it's a, it's a trick that's been known for about 30 years or so. Um, and so now I'm using that in this type construction. Um, so I've, I've essentially, I've, I've made a lambda uh, at the type level that's, that's capable of doing this call CC stuff. And that allows me to do the balancing. So I can, I can recapitulate the Abramski construction type level for things that have this shape. Now we may find that we have to add additional constraints, but that's, that's the trick. And um, I, you know, I, wish, I wish it weren't uh, uh, so hard and so technical to explain. I wish there were fewer moving parts that it was, it was as simple as the, the square root construction, um, but it's not. And it's because we're doing something really, really fancy. <laughs> we're, we're, we're taking type systems and we're, we're automatically turning them into other type systems. And, um, <coughs> um, and, it, and equipping them with the capability uh, for uh, balancing computation in such a way that we can... Um, uh, in, 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 in such a way that we can guarantee that uh, there's this relationship between the, the notion of negation and execution uh, so that you know, everything is, you know, all, all data that goes in is matched by an application of some computation to that data. So that's the, um, that's the overall program and that, would, that gives you um, this ability to relate this notion of session to this wider notion of the Kyrie style types. So you get one, one algorithm and the algorithm, um, you know, can, if you, if you run it with certain parameters, you'll get the Kyrie types. If you run, run it with other parameters, you get the session types. So that's the, the basic idea. Um, sorry if that, uh, <laughs> No, that was good. Thank uh, you, Greg. Uh, I appreciate sure. that. You know, uh, for at least for me, you know, I, I've got, I've got the big picture, which is the important piece, and you know, all the the smaller moving pieces. You know, I'll kind of gather those and collect those over time. But um, I understand the direction that you're going and and why you're going there. So th this was helpful. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 very pretty. Um, you know. Uh, it's it's a it's a cool construction, um, uh, and I'm I'm looking forward to being able to have you know more people dig in and, and, and get the get the construction. And 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 the 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 interesting point about sessions is that it, it is a property that people want want to have, right? They they want to know that there's you know for example with a database you want to make sure that every program that opens a connection to the database eventually closes the connection to the database. And if you don't, right, then the database runs out of connections. Um, and so, so it slows down, right? And there are sim similar kinds of things, similar kinds of resource accounting things like this that, uh, that have, uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, utility in the, in the, the uh, market space. So, yeah. Right. Cool. Very good. Well, that's my update. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Um, and I think there's no one else on the call, so we'll, um, we'll we can call it here. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Th thank you. Yep. Have a great day. Yeah. You too. Ciao. Ciao.